Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I'm Izzy and today I have a huge, gargantuan, enormous, monumental problem that I need help with. So I'm gonna call my friend Maggie. Maggie, can you join me? Everybody, this is Maggie. Maggie, this is everybody. Can, say hi to everybody. Hi. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> they never get it right. <laughs> so this is our problem. Now that Maggie's joining us, Maggie's kind of a resident badass now. She used to run a job shop, she can run a CNC, she knows her way around equipment, and for the last year she's been a Millwright installer. So we have all of her tools to start incorporating into the shop which means we need better storage solutions. Now there's one other issue that we have that is, you know, kind of important. Hey, Maggie, can you um, hand me that red hammer in the Kaizen wall? Yeah. No, <laughs> I can't reach it. Therein lies the other problem. I've designed the shop for somebody who's six foot two. I can reach everything because, you know, I have a longer reach. So we need to start thinking about making things accessible. So putting all these things in a really cool storage system, the batteries, the battery chargers, the drills, the grinders, will be about as useful as putting a beak on a beaver if she can't reach it. Mm -hmm. So there's that. So to tackle this problem, we're building a cordless charging station. So the charging station is also gonna have um, a place to store the drills and some grinders and some other stuff. The one thing we need to keep in mind though is that high benches, we're gonna put it against the wall above a high bench. So eventually the stuff's gonna get too high for Maggie to reach. So we're gonna use some mechanical apparatus to make the high stuff come down lower so she can reach it. The first thing we do is lay the tools out on the workbench and get the dimensions for the charging station. So we need the dimensions so we can lay out the charging station the way we want it. Now once we had that, we did a quick pencil drawing with some of the dimensions on it and then took it downstairs and did a full 3D model in SketchUp. Now, having this model gives Maggie a really good idea and me a really good idea about what we're building so it'll be a lot easier to work together. The other thing it does is it helps us get the job done faster. Since I already have the 3D model, really easy to lay it out in Vetric and then run it through the Avid robot to cut out some of the more complicated parts. Now Maggie and I will be making some of the parts by hand, some of the parts by the CNC, and we'll get this done fast. It really needs to be done today, because time is always a factor. Now because this is one of those projects that we're gonna keep for like, you know, ever, or really, really, really long time, we wanna make it out of some quality material. So in this case, we're using five by five Baltic birch. We chucked it up on the CNC, Maggie nailed it down with some plastic nails, and started the file. Now we're using the CNC to cut out the sides and the couple shelves and then the little complicated U swirly parts. Technical terms, Not, yeah, good stuff. So after the CNC did its thing, Maggie went and cut all the tabs on it. Now, I know a lot of people think that CNC does all the work, and it's not even close. They might cut out some parts, but after that, there's a lot of work that comes behind it. So in this case, Maggie cut the tabs, and then I went to doing roundovers on the edges. Now, we're just doing a really small break on this, so it's like a 1 8 roundover, just enough to clean up the edge. Once that was done, it's on to sanding, no getting out of that. With the sanding done, we went ahead and pocket holed the things that needed to be pocket holed. Now, because we have some stop positions or not, not through dados, um, there's gonna be a little bit of a round edge. So to match that round edge, I'm using a quarter inch round over and rounding over the edge so it matches. That way we get a nice clean look and I don't have to worry about, you know, chiseling out those corners. So you're gonna notice that even though I am using pocket holes, I'm also gluing this. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't wanna cut pocket holes into where the drill holders are, because you'll see them from the side. So on the bottom one, I only have one pocket hole screw and then glue. And on the top one, I only have two and then glue. So what that's gonna do is on the front end where there's no pocket holes, it's gonna give me some strength. So I'm just gonna clamp those in and let that dry. Now on the shelves in the top, I'm not adding glue because I have pocket holes all the way across. Now this piece is the part that holds the batteries on the top and folds down. 
so I wanted a, just a little extra help, so I added some glue to it. Whether it helps or not ends up for debate, but it makes me feel better, so I did. Now once all those parts were together, it was on to cutting the backs for the material and all the little pieces that we didn't cut out on the CNC. A couple things that you're going to notice. First of all, there's that weird step back on the back, and that's there for a reason, and you'll find out later in the video why that's there. And the other thing is that we need some support to screw this to the wall. So to do that, I'm just putting a support stretcher across the center shelf that I can come in later and drill some holes through and tap con this to a cement wall. The last thing to do in putting the body together is to put the folding shelf on. Now this folding shelf is going to hold the battery chargers and the batteries and it's going to fold down so Maggie can reach it. So it's pretty important that it works right. Now after we figured out that it was going to work just fine, it was time to put in some stop positions. A stop position on the top so it doesn't go too far back and a stop position on the bottom so it doesn't come too far down. Now the top is pretty easy. We're just cutting some pieces of plywood at an angle that matches the shelf when it's in its stop position. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and pocket these whole pocket hole, pocket hole these in. But there's a trick to this. I can't reach the pocket holes once they're in their proper position. So we moved the shelf to its right position, clamped it in place. And then I'm using this little offset board to kind of indicate the position of where I want this on from, from the side. Now I'm going to glue this and set it in place in its stop position. So everything is where it's supposed to be. So I'm gluing each of these in place right now because I can't reach it with the pocket hole. So I'm going to glue them, let the glue dry, and then I can come back afterwards and pull that down and the glue will keep those from moving around and I can put the pocket holes in. Very long, complicated explanation for that, but hey, that's the way it worked and it worked out pretty darn good. Now the stop position on the bottom is a little different. There's not a whole lot of room in there to put blocks. So in this case, just drilled a hole, a 5 16 hole, and then used a 3 8 tap to tap right into the wood, no bushings or anything, it's not needed. And then just a small 3 8 bolt offers us our stop position. So now when we pull this down, it stops in the same position every time. It doesn't come down and pinch people's fingers, all the stuff that we don't want to happen. And that worked out really well. Now to mount the battery chargers to the shelf, we needed to kind of lift up the material a little bit. Now rather than getting super complicated, Maggie cut out some quarter inch pieces on the table saw and then glued them onto the shelf that's gonna hold the battery chargers. All that does is lift the height up a little bit so the feet on the battery chargers don't interfere with how we're attaching them. Now to attach them, we're just using some double-sided Velcro because you, know, you never know, we might wanna pull one of these battery chargers off to take a tool to a job site or something along those lines. So that is all done with Vel Velcro. And while Maggie was doing that, I spent my time working on a assist mechanism. Now this isn't a mechanism that's gonna help the shelf come down slowly or less violently and go up much easier because this thing is going to be high on the wall and we want it to be as easy as possible to use. So this will keep it from slamming and from both ways, something. Words are hard. So the lift mechanism or lift assist mechanism, we're calling that, consists of basically 10 feet of bungee cord. Now I can't just use a short piece of bungee cord because there's not enough elasticity in it. I needed the full 10 feet. So to make that work, we ran the bungee cord through the body of the, of the drill charging station 
and then wrapped it around several pulleys. Now that gives me all that elasticity in that whole 10 feet. Now the, and I need that because there's quite a bit of distance when it folds down. I mean, there's a solid 12 inches of distance there and just a short piece of bungee cord would have made it way too stiff to come down and would have flung it back up. So by using the pulley system, I get all the elasticity of all 10 feet of the bungee cord, and that worked out really well for this project. And the really nice thing about this is it's adjustable. I can move the block that um, stops the bungee cord back and forth to add more tension or a little, little less tension depending on our needs. So the last thing to do was to um, bolt this thing to the wall with some Tapcons and then Maggie loaded up the whole thing. Of course we tested it to make sure she could reach it first and it worked out like a dream. <laughs> I am thrilled to pieces with how smooth that is. So that just worked out really well. 18 tools in there, all the battery chargers up on the top. We have room to put a couple extra battery chargers down here if we end up needing them. And it's working awesome. What do you think? I'm loving it. Yeah. If you're mean to me, you know I'm gonna screw that thing so it doesn't come down. No. <laughs> anyway guys, hey, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate y'all. Uh, if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that smash button or smash that, smash that subscribe button subscribe the smash button something and if you like the video give it a like it helps out but uh we have a lot more fun and crazy projects coming down the pipe uh, maggie is a regular fixture around here now so we're gonna have lots of fun building some really cool stuff and i hope you guys come back to watch some more we'll see you all in the next video what did i say <laughs> now you gotta talk what what okay <laughs> damn it <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to be laughing way too much today. <laughs>